Welcome to class tonight. I do hope you're all doing well. In this chapter, we have been working with many different ways to organize and display data. We've covered frequency tables, line plots, bar graphs, and now even circle graphs. Now today, we're going to be working on something that may seem a little complicated at first. We're going to be working on what's called stem and leaf plots. Now this is another way to organize data. And in fact, it is very similar to a line plot for the basic purpose is to see the shape of the data. That's why this happens, that's why this is very helpful, is so we, we can see the shape of the data. Now, the book definition right here, and you can see us on page 352, the book definition says, a book definition of, of a stem leaf plot is a graph that uses the digits of each number to show the shape of the data. Each data value is broken into a stem on the left side, and a single digit leaf on the right. To read this data, simply combine the stem with the leaf in each row. Sounds a little complicated, but stay with me for a minute. In most cases, we see it the tens place, well in several cases, in this case especially, we see the tens place is the stem, and then the ones place is the leaf. That allows us to group all the numbers that have the same tens value, so they'd be in the same chart. Now, let's get to some more practice here. We would then write 58, so number 58, as 5 line 8. So, for example, I see this 58 here. I would write 58 as 5 and then 8. The same thing, I would write 59 here as 5, 9. So, right here, I have the tens value as a stem. In this case, the ones value is the leaf. Now, if I were to go ahead and map out this entire data set, it would look like this. I've gotten that done, gotten that done right there. So now let's go ahead and do the, let's do, go ahead and do the 60 and then the 63. So right here, my tens value is going to be the 6. So I'm going to write that as my stem. And the 0 is my leaf. And here I have two 3s, so I'll go ahead and write 3 and 3. So my stem and leaf plot for that set of data is going to look like that. Reading a line plot then is going to take some work actually. We must look at the key first. Ooh, this is wrong. Reading a line plot is going to take some work then. We must always look at the key first, and the key is down here. And the key tells us right here 2 line 3 means 23. So this means the tens digit is the stem and the ones digit is the leaf. Um, now we're going to use that key to help us to understand the rest of it. Now we're actually going to look at the check understanding questions here at the bottom of the page. The first question says, uh, how many students take 37 minutes? So 37 minutes, I'm going to look at the the tens place is a 3, so I'm going to look up here, oh, there's my tens place, and my ones place is 7, so I'm going to look over at my ones place, oh, there's my leaves, and I actually see three sevens. That means there are going to be three students, so 37 appeared three times in the data, so there are going to be three students who took 37 minutes, so the answer to the first one is 3. Part B, what is the range of the data? Now, range takes us back all the way to one of the first lessons in this chapter. Range has the idea of uh, the, uh, how, high, how high and how low the data can go. So, right here we're going to take the largest number with the range, 58. We're going to take the smallest number, that's going to be the first number, 23. And so all I'm going to do is simply subtract the biggest number, biggest value, from the smallest number. So 58 minus 23 is going to be 35. So for part B, the range of the data is going to be 35. Now, for part C, we're actually going to come back to that because I believe we're going to try to talk about that one in class. Making a stem and leaf plot is really very simple after you understand how to read it. We must first look at our data and determine our stems. In the book, so this is once again on page 353, in the book over here, you see hourly wages. Now, they're actually going to use the ones value here, the, uh, this number right here. They're actually going to use those as the stems, and then they're going to take the tenths values and put them as the leaves. Now, right here, what I would look at is 
the most often used numbers, those numbers, either the ones value or the tens value or the hundreds value, that's used most often, use those as the leaps. And the numbers that change a lot, or sorry, use those as the stems. The numbers that change a lot, you want to use those as the leaps. So here we have the ones place value as the stems, and the numbers that are going to change a lot, those are going to be the leaves. And so we see right here, we see an entire, um, we see the entire uh, chart right here where they have put the key down there and made sure you understand that. Now we are actually going to go ahead and work through the check understanding here. And I actually have that data set up here on the board. Um, now, so the first thing we are going to do then, we're going to take our data set, we're going to look at our numbers. We need to decide what is our stem going to be. Now, those numbers that you see, you see the ones, uh, the hundreds place value and the tens place value, there's not a lot of variation in those two place values. So my suggestion, let's go and use those as our stems. Now, the ones place value in this case, those change a lot. So let's go ahead and use those as our leaves. So our key, and I'll just go ahead and make, use the first number right up here. Our key is going to be, and I'll write that at the very bottom. So 13 is going to be our stem, or the, uh, the uh, tens place value and the hundreds place value. It's going to be our stem. And then we're going to use the ones place value as our lead. So 13 line 3 is going to equal 137. See how I made that. Now, our chart is going to look like this. I'm going to take all these numbers. I'm going to take all these numbers, and I'm going to put them in our chart. Now, first I'm going to go ahead and make my list. Now, I see the smallest stem is going to be 12, so I'm going to put, go ahead and put 12 as our first stem, and then I'm going to look through our data. Well, I see right here, I see 121, I see 123, so I'm going to go ahead and put 1, cross that out, put, one, put a 3, and then go ahead and cross that out. Then I see a 4, so I'll put a four in there. Then I actually see two fives. So five and then five. And the other five is going to be um, so there's somewhere. Oh, right there. There's the other five. And then I see a six and a seven. So I'll get rid of that one and then also that one. Now my next stem is going to be 13 because I'm counting up. So 13 now my first stem is I see 130, so I'm going to put a 0. I see 132, so I'm going to put a 2. And then I see a 3, a 6, a 7, an 8, and then an 8. Alright, so I got rid of all of my 130s. Then my next, now I'm going to go to my 140s. Okay, my 140s, I see 140, I see 141, I see 144, and then 145. So I can get rid of all those as well. And final, uh, the last two I'm left with, I am left with 150. Now I see a 0, and then a 5, so 150 and 155. And last, I'm running out of room here, I see an 18, and I see a, oops, meant to be a, I see an 18, I see 181. So right there, and I know it's kind of crammed in there, that is going to be my stem and leaf plot for this check understanding portion. Well, that is stem and leaf plots. They do seem a little complicated, but with some work, they can become really easy. Your homework tonight is to complete pages 353, 1 through 7, and only do the odd. This will be due tomorrow in class. Once again, page 353, 1 through 7, odd. Have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow.